Raise your hand, we're live. We're live. Yeah. It says customize the <coughs> I'm glad the mics are on so we can explain the music. Yes, we're back. Sorry we're a little tardy, folks, but we're here in our studio. Not so close. I mean, close a lot. <laughs> what, what is this? What is this you're playing? It's, it's, uh, it's this Twilight Zone, but he said it's No, it's The Outer Limits by Dominique Frontier. You ought to know that, Al. He scored 12 O'Clock High, your favorite television show that dealt with World War II. I got it. Well, anyway, hey, we're live anyway. We are live. We're live anyway. I don't know. Maybe we want to be or not. Hi, everybody. Have you? Did you miss us the last two weeks? We missed you. Hope you had fun with your Super Bowl parties, and I hope you had a nice Valentine's Day with your sweetheart. We're going to talk about the golden age of Hollywood today with a very special guest star live from California from Hollywood land as it were yeah I, I, you ever been to Hollywood land uh, there's Hollywood land type twinkle music hear it chance you've been to Hollywood land yes twice I have too I, I've been more than all of you <laughs> on business probably you probably <laughs> yeah, were earning much. money out there yeah, well, and you went to a wedding not too long ago in California right. Right, what a year ago so I went out there to see all the graves or all the past stars that, yeah that's where they're all at Right. They're all out there waiting for me. <laughs> well, anyway, we're about to get started here, everybody, so y'all just hang in there with us. Chances must be sharing stuff. Mm -hmm. He is. He's sharing stuff, even as we speak. I can pop this music up a little bit. Up, it's a little low here for some reason. Well, I'm the nostalgic pod blast will start momentarily. Ah, who's that? that? I think it's you. I think it's the golden tones of Al Hardy, Jr. That's right. I am a, ju <laughs> I, I am a junior. Are you a junior? I'm just kidding. Are you really a junior? Did you share on the rewind page? <laughs> no, I'm about to. Okay. Now, who we are, we started this show back in June of 2019. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm Chance Bartels. Tom Williams is here to my right, and Al Hardy is our well, co-founder who's running the board today. Well, should I turn the camera on? Sure. Yeah, might as well. Might as well turn the camera on so they can see us. Do they really want to see us, though? No, they probably don't. They probably don't want to see us at all. No, we're here anyway. Yeah, whatever. I mean... You got the uh, you got you got the promo ready the the, uh, the trailer. Yeah, I can do that. Well, we don't have to watch play the trailer just yet. We want to set this up. We're going to start a great series of shows about Hollywood Studios, Paramount Studios, 20th Century Fox, and we're going to start today with Warner Brothers. And we have an incredible guest who'll be calling in later in about 15 minutes or so from California. What's his name? His name's Woody Wise. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, Woody. Woody. And he is the founder of a really great group of guys called the Cliffhangers. They've been around for the over Brotherhood 40 years. The Brotherhood of the Popcorn. 40 years. Well, that's, that's the name of the documentary we're yeah, going to talk right. about, The Brotherhood of the Popcorn. And we'll find yep. out who they are. But this, this group is excellent. They're very talented. And there's some normal guys that just love film. When I say normal guys, I mean guys that never really worked in the industry. And then there's animators. There I am. <laughs> there, there's... there's there's people that were fish truck drivers and animators, and uh, you're going to learn all about them. But really, we're going to talk about old school Hollywood, the golden age of Hollywood. That's right. And we're going to talk right. about this great movie that you should check out called The Brotherhood well, of the Pop. It's a documentary. It's a documentary. It's called, yes. like it really but one is. thing we all have in common, we all like movies. And, and the funny thing about it is, I, 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 mm -hmm. I want to. What was I wanna, that? I don't know what that was. <laughs> I think it was this computer. I, what I want to do is uh, ask Woody, uh, because we've been doing it for this is quite our, a few what, years, too. A couple far, of years? Couple as, years far as, yeah, as far yeah. as getting together and watching movies or whatever. Oh, we've been doing that a long time. And, 
it started with film, actually, whether it's 35 millimeter film or 60 millimeter film. And uh, so we should be uh, cliffhangers east. Well, you know, that's, <laughs> that's what really, if you think about it, I mean, that's what brought me together with you. That's true. That's very and true. Actually, with Chance, too, when yeah. Chance got a job at Cumulus, mm -hmm. uh, I found out that he was a film collector and liked yeah, movies, yeah. and that's how it all came yeah, about. That's, that's all and then you moved to. Um, Atlanta from Virginia, where yeah. Woody is from Virginia. Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, and you came to work at Turner Broadcasting, and yes, I did. Uh, somebody said, well, you need to meet Al. He collects movies, and that's how we met. Actually, they said you need to take as much films from Al as possible. <laughs> uh. <laughs> you know one reason I got a job in television? Tell us. Why? Um, I can't see. He can't see. No. Um, it's because... I like collecting movies, and I, I wanted a job in the film department so I could have my hands on 16 millimeter film. Oh, yeah. That's the reason why, really, if you think about it. <laughs> yeah. But... I, I, see, I was going to play, I thought it was going to be an interesting story, so I was going to play a little James Bond music with it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you know, but, but, you know, I started, man, I started collecting film um, back in the uh, 70s, actually. I, I started collecting film before Tom Hudgens did. Did you oh, guys really? explain yeah. to the layman's yeah. out there and the younger crowd that so, film is for reel-to-reel -reel projectors, whether it's Super 8, 16 millimeter, or 35 millimeter? Yeah, and it takes projectors to run the film, and it's uh, just like this, just like when you used to go to the movie theater uh, before digital kicked in. And, and our film. guest, that was his first job, Woody Wise, as a, was a projectionist, yes. and he was 16 years old in Virginia, your home state, Tom yeah, Williams. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I'll be curious to find out what, what part of Virginia he was in. He, he, I told him, I can't remember. I, I, know, I know, but I'll save it for Woody. Well, I, uh, you know, the first job I had was as a usher at the Bailey Theater, my hometown of Wilmington, yeah, yeah. North Carolina. Well, you know, that's funny. the funny thing is, um, I didn't really get into 35 millimeter until you... Uh, had the 35 millimeter at home, at, right, at, at yeah. home mm -hmm. downstairs, and I got interested in it, and uh, I got a job at Carmack, and you came over, yeah, uh, right, right before that theater opened up, and it was a brand new theater, and we ran test prints and did all this stuff, and you made sure I knew what I was doing, yeah. etc. Showed me how to make sure I was uh, editing on the right line on the 35 millimeter, because if you do, the, you know, you'll be a frame off from blah 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 blah, well, all that stuff. I, I learned the, the majority of that from Al. And because uh, Al had been doing it for, for a quite a time. few, for, yeah, for quite a few years, and uh, you know, I picked, luckily I picked up on it pretty quick, and um, and it wasn't wasn't a problem. The only thing I did that Al did not like was I used to move platter prints over from one platter to the other without the without the safety, uh, <laughs> the well, safety the, the clamps. Clamp sure. And I would move. Now I would never move Titanic because that was a nine reeler. So I, I always I, put the clamps no, on. No, I never, I never, because, because our platters wound them tight enough to where now if they were really loose, if you know, like like when loose, you, like like when you run the, well, the, the film Saturday, was round loose on the platter. Yeah, like sometime. when you run the Saturday morning kitty flicks or whatever we bad would print, run, yeah, just, um, they would wind loose. Right. And uh, then I would use the clamps, but majority of the time I didn't. Use I was clamps. working at a theater here in Atlanta. It was called Friday's Plaza, yeah. and uh, a guy named Aaron worked there. I won't give his last name. But he, you know, was like an assistant manager, and yes. I worked in the yeah. booth. You remember yeah. Aaron? I remember Aaron very well. And so, Isn't uh, he a cop now? Yeah, he's a he's, he's a, police a police officer. officer. Yeah. But anyway, so I was in the booth, you know, there at the rewind table, you know, <laughs> working working on prints. And I, he says, I'll go ahead and move the prints because at the on oh, Thursday yeah, yeah, yeah. the movies totally change. Like we we yeah, just yeah. we 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 would move a, a, a movie, from, say from the big house to the smaller house right. if it was in its second or third right. week. Right. And so. Uh, he said, I'll go ahead and move the print. I, and I said, well, here's the clamps. He said, I can move it without the clamps. <laughs> this, is a, this is a true story. Yeah. And so I was sitting there doing my thing, splicing film, and, you know, I heard, <laughs> Aaron says, don't turn around. <laughs> wait, 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 just, wait. Just like, wait. hey. Uh, I felt yeah. should play the film he, he, one. He, he, uh, he tried to move the film without the clamps. Ah. And... The, but, the center core came out. Right, right. But unless you know how to do it, like I knew how to do it. I never had a problem with that. Now, uh, other people did. Right. Because because they didn't want to use the clamps like me. But I said, no, you use the clamps. Unless I'm with you, use the freaking clamps. Well, you know, it was like 1130 at night. Right, Woody? And, right, Woody? <laughs> it was 1130 at night. And so 
I says, I'm not staying here to put this together. I said, yeah. you're going to have to stay here all night long. and get wow. the, if he, So he had to string the film out and get it all back. So I left. I mean, I what guess did, he what, did. What, did he even know how to put it back together? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. He could do it, yeah. So, okay, I, I remember uh, one time, this was before, way before, it's back when I lived in Virginia, um, uh, I'd gotten a print, a mylar print of Future World. Okay. Future World, yes. Uh, and, uh, oh, good. The sequel to Westworld. Yeah, correct. I like that it was, movie. It was actually. a great movie. The and first get, one was the best. Yeah. It was with Yul Brenner, but Yul Brenner was in Future World yes. in a small, smaller degree. But Well, the guy had sent it to me on cores, and I had never really dealt with cores before. Cores are films with just, they're on plastic, on little plastic round Disc in a, discs. And, and there's no reel. So just like a. Uh, a Meaning to make up reel. Yeah. I, I, just like a, cl a platter film, it's it's the same thing. If you're not careful with it, you can fall apart with it. And that's what this film did. It fell around my bedpost. All around my bedpost. <laughs> so I called Tom Hudgens, and yeah. uh, he came over, and we la had a good laugh about it, and it took us about an hour to, to get it back. Um, you know, I, I don't think, I don't remember cutting the film to get it uh, put back together, but we might have. But, you know, I, I had always had a habit of looking back at the projector to make sure it was Oh, same up, here. You know, same here. Always I, did. I, yeah, I would, never, I would never just start it and walk away. I, I would always just make sure. But you know what I did one time? I, I For some reason, I put I set the projector, a bell and how, on, on, on the chair. <laughs> well, some, it, 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 the chair kind of, you know, yeah, halfway yeah, yeah. through the movie, it, the chair fell over and the whole projector went <laughs> bang in the floor. But thank God it didn't hurt the machine, but you know, I jumped up and grabbed it real quick. I'm know. amazed. I was amazed it didn't break the arms on it. Yeah, me you too. Know, but it didn't. I was lucky. <laughs> I, I had a, uh, not to change the subject, but I had an Edison cylinder player with a big morning glory horn and had it sitting on top of I never of, had one of those. Yeah, I had it sitting cool. on a, yeah, I got it from Hudgens. Yeah, and I and I, and I it was sitting on top of one of those portable uh, uh, TVs back then. Right, the tube TVs. You remember mm -hmm. those folks? Oh yeah, tube CRT. TVs. Yeah. And it was I sitting on there one. precariously, like an idiot. I was young, and uh, sure enough, I was putting on a jacket or a sweater or something, and I hit the horn. That thing went. <laughs> so it bent the spindle, It went. It bent the feed arm, which yeah. which actually uh, makes the cylinder play. So I had to get a new feed arm. Um, but Tom Tom bent it back and, and made it work. Right. But he said in order for this to be right, you're gonna have to get another round. But you know, well back in the day I you know But that was yeah. way back in the day. But, but I only had maybe one projector and you know, yeah, you you wanted course. to prote protect that projector with your life. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. But now I have a basement full of them. <laughs> you, you, people yes, just say you, you can do. buy it. You can buy them for you Al know. Al has people. so many projectors. It's hard. Well, wait, I haven't been in the film room. You said you rearranged stuff. No, well, so, I'm not. The projector is still uh, on the floor. <laughs> so it's still hard to navigate uh, around his edit, film editing table. He's got a really nice film editing table from, from where, where's it from again? It came from Phipps Plaza, Phipps Penthouse Plaza. Theater. Yeah, and Plaza. Which is an AMC theater these days. Yeah. Yes. And yes. it's a nice film table. Uh, it's got electric, electric rewinds, rewinds on, on it and everything. And, yeah. buddy, you can't get it. You can't. You can hardly fit two people. If he wants to show you something on his film room, Ron Taylor, be careful. Well, it's funny. We have a mutual friend, and uh, she had three projectors. She called me up and said, you want to buy these three projectors? It was two Ikeys and a, and a uh, Elmo. Yeah. And yeah. so I went and looked at the projectors. The two Ikeys, didn't, they, didn't, they needed some work. Yeah. But I already got two really good Ikeys, you know. Yeah. But the uh, Elmo worked fine. And she said, uh, I said, well, I'll take the Elmo, but I really don't want the Ikeys. Yeah. She says, you can just have them. Just take them. Just, I want to get rid of them. <laughs> We don't, you know, we're but I did give her fifty bucks, you know, yeah. for the for the Elmo. So basically, we're filled. This is called filling time, and we are. we're talking about a, a, a sundry of different things. It's all film related, though. Uh, well, Woody started out, you know, uh, with his. Well, you'll find out. But he was a film buff and film collector. Yeah, you know, in yes, sixteen millimeter yes. film. And, and, I mean, and Woody, I, I my first experience with Woody. This, and by the way, in case Woody is listening, this is Tom. I'm out. And, and it's Mr. Jack Benny on I'm eBay. Out. Well, I probably shouldn't have said that. But um, I bought something from him about almost two years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was a, uh, it was a um, I should have brought the book with me. It's a, it's a Screen Actors um, book or yearly book or something like that. And he sent me his documentary as a gift. Ah, it's really I, good. And, and, I, and yeah. I told you about it. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell Chance about it, but I didn't really know Chance then. Mm -hmm. but, but I told you about it. Yeah. And I, I want to say... Uh, 
offered to loan it to you, but I never did. <laughs> no, you never did. But, but, I said, but I said look for it because it's it's out there. Well, Woody sent me a link to it. To Let's watch uh, the trailer. With, with, with the, with, we'll get it with, with, with the password. And yeah, so yeah. I was able to watch it. Yeah, so yeah. And we have a trailer we're going to show you. Is that loaded up? Check this out soon in just a second, everybody. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll want to show that to you before we get Woody on the yeah. horn. Because we're about four minutes, too. And isn't the trailer about four minutes long? Yeah, but Woody, the, the cool part about Woody is him and his friends, they're, they're all from that same uh, uh, area of L.A., um, and, and they all come from different backgrounds, kind of like us some three. work in the some work come at Warner Brothers, some were were drivers, some were you know they had Hanna different Barbera, jobs, yeah. etc. And uh, and fascinating backgrounds actually, um, to the point to where I'm going, man, I'd like to talk to these guys too, you know, at some point oh. in time. So we've got the trailer of Woody's uh, documentary here. We want everyone to share with everybody. Uh, before we get Woody on the horn, and uh, we're going to do a show with Woody, and we're going to talk about all of his exploits. An interesting side note is um, the, the location in L.A. where he kind of lives, It's uh, it has a Betty Davis connection, and we won't talk about we won't, that. We'll, we'll let him we'll talk have, about we'll that. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But it's got a, a very good Betty Davis it connection. Does. It does. So if you're ready to run the trailer, Al, here's the trailer. Let's do this and run the trailer and let everyone see what, uh, what the documentary is all about. Cliffhangers is a, a group of young men my age <laughs> who uh, watch old black and white movies mostly and serials called Cliffhangers. We're from all different backgrounds. My background is theaters and video and working in the movie theaters. Animators, retired animators. I've never had a real job my entire life. You want to pay me to do this? Draw cartoons? Heck, where do I sign up? Fish truck drivers, there's uh, retired school teachers, retired newspaper man, a retired singer, but somehow the movies bring us together. We talk about films, old films, new films, stars. There's my buddy, Gene Autry, one of my favorites. Marilyn Monroe, what more can we want? I want to be the guy that's in that movie with that girl. It's just like a Saturday matinee as a kid. It brings you back to your childhood. If I was a good kid, I'd get a, a 25 cents to go to the movie, to get lunch, to buy candy with, and popcorn, and see 25 cartoons, three movies, and a couple of movie serials. Um, we had to think of a news cinema, and they were perfect for children. They lasted an hour. And it was a little, little paradise of mine. Don't tell me I'm too old. I'm not too old. Boy, it was like a left hook that dropped me right to the ground. Lateral Parkinson's disease on my right side. I'm going to watch my career disintegrate right in front of my eyes. I like it all. There's nothing in Hollywood not to like. Popcorn spill on aisle 12. They're all characters. They all have their own thing. Rocky feeds the dogs. Jack orders movies every other week. He's got thousands and thousands of movies. Don't talk about religion. Well, I think they're all kind of religious. I think they thank God for every good picture we ever made. But if you're going through anything, don't give up. We're there not only for the movies, but a lot of it's just camaraderie, friendship, and being a member of the cliffhangers. The next thing you know, there's a whole buffet of life in that house. Right, well, Everything you would want in life is there. These films, just like the cliffhangers, have somehow stood the test of time. They have faithfully brought us together, reinforced our brotherhood, and connect our present lives with our memories of yesterday. Find the passion in here and go do it. Oh, uh, that's now that 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 was a four minute trailer, um, which was uh, a little long. There's a two minute, there's a two and a half minute trailer to a four minute trailer. Uh, this movie came out about 2015, if I'm not mistaken. And you can kill that, uh, kill your phone out when you can. <laughs> so I'm hearing myself repeat okay, myself. Okay. It was just kind of unusual. So, well, we have Woody on the phone. Now let's go to our good friend Woody Wise out there in California. Woody. Hello, Woody. Hello, and welcome. 
Hello, hello. It's good to have you here. It really is. Uh, thank you very much for having me. It sounds like it's gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's lunchtime where you're at, where you're at, Woody. Are you got all the guys at the house uh, eating lunch today, or is this today not a cliffhanger day? They do that Saturdays, every other Saturday. Well, we can pretend it's Saturday. Well, yeah, we wish it was, but because we haven't had any now for a year. Oh my gosh, uh, you're kidding! But because of the COVID, you yeah, know, my, my, yeah. My little theater only seats uh, eight or nine, maybe right. ten of them, and it's so small that we just, with this COVID, we just can't get together. Wow, that's that's a shame that you, you, you I know you missed that for crying out loud. I mean, my gosh, the, the, just a backlog of, of films that you may uh, have waiting for you to, to, to watch as a group. It's crazy. Yeah, yep. We we really miss getting together. We I keep in contact with the guys. Yeah. Uh, we lost we lost one Rocky. If you remember Rocky. Oh, oh no! Sorry. Oh no! Sorry to hear that. The house painter. Yeah, yep. Yeah, he was a great guy, but he. Uh, Oh. He, he passed, passed away about six months ago. Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. He was the wild card. I took notes and I gave a little moniker to everyone, as you guys did and, and do, uh, with the Seven Dwarves characters. But man, that is a shame. I'm really God bless you, Rocky in heaven. Man. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, so I've got an opening. <laughs> oh man! Wait, yeah. wait, I'm, wait! I'm moving to LA tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. In the documentary, he mentions that unfortunately, I mean, this is sad, but. You know, there's a yeah. waiting list for years, and unfortunately, the way you become a cliffhanger is you have to wait, unfortunately, for someone to pass away, as yeah. Woody mentions in his documentary, Brotherhood of the Popcorn. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Well, Woody, give us a history. Tell us how all of this really got started. I know that you are from Virginia originally, and uh, tell us how you ended up in California. Now, like we talked uh, uh, by texting uh last week and when i was 16 years old i you know i wanted i love the movies i used to go all every saturday me and a buddy uh we would catch the bus in my hometown and go downtown and we would go to the movies and sometimes we would go to two movies we would go from one theater because back then all the movie theaters were downtown we didn't have the malls or individual screens and so when i turned 16 i decided i wanted to get a job in a movie theater so i became an usher so i could watch free movies <laughs> you know and, shocker and so and so uh but and you're the same way from your hometown in virginia you got a job working at the reed theater i do believe is that correct uh yeah that was sort of my second time i uh uh, well, I finally got I got into really loving the, the, going to the movies when I was very early, like seven years old. My my dad bowled every Wednesday night, and he would drop me off at the theater. Even at, at age seven, then it was safe; you could drop your kid off at the theater. Right. And uh, my really first love was projection. I just wanted to be a projectionist because I would go to that theater while he was bowling. And just watch the light coming out of the porthole. You know, I was the same way, Woody. I would always look back at that beam of light coming from that little porthole up, up, up way above. You know what I'm saying? And right. seeing that beam of light hit the screen. And I was always fascinated by uh, uh, seeing that. And I do remember the first time I saw a, a 35 millimeter projector was at a drive in. And so, uh, before probably, I got a job probably, at the Bailey, probably going to the restroom. <laughs> no, well, I went. No, I went to the concession stand, and they had they had the uh, um, the booth door open. I looked in. Right, I said, well, that's what I mean. I mean, they were huge at, at my drive, and it was an anchor drive, and they always had the door open. It was a screen door there. Yeah, and because it was so hot, it was it's so hot, hot, and there's no air conditioning yeah, in the summertime. Hot. And that was a huge projector. The same for you, Woody. Were you when you first saw the projector, how big it was? I said, my God, that's a huge thing. You know. Well, That's what was, she said. When I was going to these theaters, um, uh, at that one theater, it was called the Ingobar Theater in uh, downtown Alexandria, Virginia. Oh, that's a great name. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the Ingobar. And I would I would never watch the movie because Wednesday night was not really a kid's movie. And so I would, sneak up, I would sneak up the stairs and just peek around where I could see them running the projectors. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it, it was just fascinating to me um so i so i was just and then my parents gave me a 16 millimeter silent projector with uh, an Abbott color reel that i 
ran off. <laughs> oh, okay, because so, that's what I was going to ask you, because uh, my first foray into film was was a silent, uh, well, let me back up. The first, my first foray was 8mm. My father would shoot films. But then there, I had a silent, just like you, 16 millimeter, I think it was a Keystone, and I had some 400 foot reel of some Western. I don't right. even know what it was. Hop along Cassidy, probably. I, it, may have, it may have been. But I remember I loved it from that moment forward. I mean, I, I, you know, a Kenner Easy Show projector was, was there as well. I got one of those and wasn't quite as, as good as film. Well, Woody, I still have my original 8 millimeter projector my parents gave me for Christmas. It was a Thunderbird. And I still, it's sitting out there in my living room on a shelf. I still have it. It doesn't work any longer, but I still have it. <laughs> That was my, you know, collecting eight millimeter films, and I still have those eight millimeter movies. I still have them. Hop along, Cassidy's and Abbott and Costello. Now, from the collection, I've seen some of the things that you've got in your house. Do you still have your sixteen millimeter projector? No, no. I uh, well, uh, I I used to uh, when I was running movie theaters back in uh, Alexandria. Uh, of course, I I started. When I was 14, I was working in this uh, little, we lived in a little town called Franconia, Virginia, wow. uh, which is just a few miles outside of Alexandria. And I got a job in this soda fountain, which was right next to a little theater. And the soda fountain, when you wash the dishes, it was right next to the booth. You could go up in the booth. And so the guy would teach me, I was 14 years old, he would teach me how to run the projector. Oh, wow. 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 While he went down to the beer garden <laughs> and had beer. And so when he got fired at 14, I became the projectionist at this little Stilvia Theater in wow. San Antonio. It's, it's kind of like a weird cinema paradisio, <laughs> except, yeah. except you, you, you got to run the, run the whole thing. Wow, that's great. I remember the theater that I grew up at. It's called the Village Theater in, in Hilton Village, which was in Newport News, Virginia. And... Um, I remember between the old guy named Les Snipes was his name. Les he, Snipes. Les Snipes, and he would run the projectors there, and he eventually worked at WBEC TV where I worked, and he was in, worked in the film department. Make a long story short, two projectors, and in between the two projectors was an open toilet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, but there's usually only one person. Open well, the but, but the projection room had, they had, had yeah, to stay up yeah, because yeah. they did the movies reel to reel. Because there wasn't a yeah, every twenty minutes, you know, and so they had to have a restroom upstairs. In so, the so what do you you obviously learned on a non platter system, correct? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, when I was running the theater, I actually had thirty five millimeter uh, in my home. Oh, oh wow, that's great! Like Al does because because I was running the movie theaters. And I could get all the first run movies. <laughs> you take them home. <laughs> I know somebody else that did that whose name will go unmentionable. Al. But yeah, yeah, that that was that's great. Well, Woody, when I grew up in North Carolina, I had a, of course, I had a, a Bell and Howell 16 millimeter projector. And when I went to college, the two years I went at UNC, uh, you know, they would have movies every Tuesday night in the in the student center. And so they would get movies from Swank or Films Incorporated or whatever. And they would always send the films in early, you know, three or four days before the yeah, screening. So you could build them up. So I would, no, they were, these were 16 millimeter. Oh, I'm sorry. So I would, I would take the prints home and show them at home and have all my friends come over and watch movies at home. I remember seeing Blazing Saddles, which was a Warner Brothers movie. Uh, taking that home and then the, uh, the Exorcist, I think, was a Warner Brothers movie. Oh, and, gosh. Yeah. So, yeah, it was fun. So, Woody, what kind of films did you run? Uh, this is before, uh, obviously, I'm assuming, Cliffhanger was actually started. But what oh, yeah, this was, this, was, this was my early days yeah. in Virginia, uh, running the movie theaters. I, I managed one of the big theaters, and I drove the film truck also. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, we had so, the film truck here at Benton Brothers. And that's how I got into film collecting, so right. because I got to know all the guys at the film exchanges. Ah, and then they told, yes. They told me that they would jump, you know. Yes, like, that's oh, correct. We, we know that friends. story. We, we know that story. We know that story. <laughs> so, like... I, uh, yeah, so I have a pretty good film collection also. Now, now do you, still, you, you still have a quote-unquote film collection, right? Or, or am I incorrect? Uh, yeah, uh, not anymore. No, I, I, don't, I don't have any film anymore. Oh, oh wow! Well, you're bound no, to miss. I'm, you're bound to miss it a little bit. Like, may I ask something, Woody? Did you convert any of these films digitally before you got rid of them, or what? Uh, well, uh, you know, when we first started the cliffhangers, uh, 
uh, yeah, I was just running 16 millimeter. Right. Uh, and so uh, uh, that, then of course, when the digital start coming out, you can only get so many 16 millimeter movies. Uh, you know, I couldn't really run any new stuff, so our new newer films. So, so I ended up gradually, because I was in the video business here, so right, right. I gradually, kind of, I gradually got away from film because it just became bulky, hard to get, yeah, and uh, right. you know. It's yeah. there in the digital. Yeah, we're looking at a picture of you now, uh, just kind of examining film. And just, uh, yeah, there's a delay, Woody. You'll see it if you're near I a think, monitor. I think that, listen, Woody, I think it was like it was a 35 print you were looking at there. But uh, well, that, that's a 70 millimeter. That's a 70. Yeah, now I'll see it's a 70 millimeter. I ran that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. By the way, folks, if you're listening I've, I've on. Got a, go ahead. I've got an interesting story about that also, but that's a. Uh, I, I, I love 70 millimeter and. Um, well, we could get into that, get a little ahead of ourselves, but uh, I did end up in in California when the Harold Lloyd estate uh, closed. Yeah. I was a re relief projectionist here in Los Angeles. Yeah, because I want to ask but, you about uh, that later for sure. Yeah, but the the my 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 trip to California, I used to come out here and visit friends, and they were friends of Harold Lloyd. Ah. And, uh, well, yeah. I got to meet Harold Lloyd, and uh, uh, and when he passed away, they were looking for a manager to run the museum, the right. Harold Lloyd Estate Museum, mm -hmm. and I got the job. Now, who is who, who, who is the young man? I'm assuming it was a young man. It was a, it was a documentary about how uh, Harold Lloyd kept all the films out in his shed or something like that. They weren't they weren't in the best no. shape. I, I'm sure you're familiar with that, right? Yeah, it wasn't a shed. That oh well, a, I'm, a, I, a, I don't remember. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was a real film vault. Okay. Um, he, he kept all, well, he owned all these movies. Right, right. Uh, he owned everything, and he kept all the negatives. Uh, wow. His granddaughter, wow. Susan, his granddaughter, Suzanne Lloyd, now handles all that. She's really done a great job uh, getting uh, getting it out to the public. And there's a Harold Lloyd YouTube now where you can watch a lot of them free. Wow. Really? Wow, I've checked that out. So, so he, he basically... Uh, um, kept all the rights and everything to his films. He was smart in that way, right? Yep, yep. Yeah. He owned everyone. That's, that's... Actually, when he, when he died, I I talked to him, or I was, had seen him before he passed away, Right. and he didn't think anybody wanted to see his films. He, yeah, I heard that, that too. Yeah. yeah, I'd heard that as well. Well, Woody, tell us, how did you end up in California? When you, when you from leaving Virginia, I mean, what took you to California? Well, I was Running, uh, you know, this was when all the all the theaters I operated, I was general manager of, right. uh, were all single screens. Uh, the, the, the company I worked for was struggling. It was right there when, you know, single screens were going out. And the twins and, were uh, coming in. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I wasn't happy. The company wasn't happy. And when I got the offer to, to be manager of Lloyd Estate, I took it. Wow. 1973 moved here and became manager of the Lloyd Estate the Museum. Wow, that's great. That is great. What a job. That must have been fun, fun, fun. And you got paid well, for it. It was fun, but the estate, of course, didn't make it because it yeah. was in Beverly Hills and it had all kinds of restrictions. Uh, it was a great place to be. I, I met a lot of great people. They filmed a lot there. I got to meet a lot of the people that filmed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with Edith Head for a month. Oh, wow. wow. You know, yeah. I got to have lunch with people like Robert Wise. And so it was a great time for a couple of years, but uh, it just didn't make it, and then we had to close it down. Oh, Robert sure. Wise, who directed, of course, Sound of Music. And The Day of the Earth. For the layman out there that may not know who Robert Wise is. Great film director. Hey, Woody, well, yeah. uh, what... Now, what took you to Warner Brothers? How did you end up working for uh, uh, the Warner Brothers Pictures Corporation? Well, let's let's back up here a little okay. bit. I never I never worked for Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. What happened? Uh, what happened was when I retired in uh, 2004, a friend of mine was in charge of the Warner Brothers Museum. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, I was. I was still, I consider myself still young. <laughs> <And> <laughs> of course. I wanted to do something, so 
he says, why don't you come and be a docent at the at the uh, at the Warner Brothers Museum, which was usually only for employees, uh, retired right, employees. Right. So I was the only one there that wasn't a retired employee, and I was there for 15 years. So, oh. and uh, had a great time there. I owned a lot every week, and it was just a great time for me. Yeah, because I remember when I went, because I did uh, the Academy Awards for uh, Turner for about eight years in a row, which is why I went to LA every year. And um, luckily, when, when Turner merged with Warner and all this rigmarole went through with Turner, with Ted and everybody, our badge, for some reason, our Turner badge would let us on a lot at, at Warner. Wow, <laughs> yes, cool. It and, and me and Ralph Prado, my, my photographer that I had taken with me, uh, we went on a lot, no problem. <laughs> Dro- drove right on the lot and parked in front of the, one of the sound stages, went to the mill, st- I think it was the mill store is what it was called, where the... You know, with the Warner employees went and to buy stuff. We went in there and bought a bunch of stuff. Still got the jacket and everything I bought. So it's, so it's a pretty cool place to, 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 to walk through. Uh, and it's pretty amazing to think about all the history that you're walking through. And I'm sure you felt the same way every day you went there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course it was. I would just to go through the, you know, go to the gate. And, yeah. Uh, well, and you know. My uh, my first trip to California was, um, and I, I sent you a picture, Woody, me standing in front of the Warner Brothers studio. And yeah. so, uh, but I remember one Sunday afternoon, me and my buddy were riding around and we ended up there at Warner Brothers, but I made the wrong turn. And so I, I, it, where the gate is, I, I turned around to go back and then the guard came out and says, you know, this is private property. Anyway, I told him, well, we were just, you know, we were sightseeing and tourists. So anyway, uh I said, you know, and then he just said, this is a true story. He says, would you like to see a soundstage? And I said, that would be fantastic. So he took us, this is a true story. Wow. He, took, he took us on the soundstage and that's at that time they were shooting Bonanza. And so I got on the Bonanza set. How about that? It was a, um, there on the, and uh, of course we didn't have cell phones and back then I would have taken the pictures, but I, I think I have a picture somewhere, but that was, it was just amazing. And that was my foray into the lot there at Warner Brothers. Tom, I got a question for you. When you were working that red carpet and you were directing at the Academy Awards, did you ever work with our friend Bill Tush who was working no, the red carpet no. for CNN? No, entertainment. I never, I, I never saw him there. Ironically enough, I never, and I knew Bill. I, mean, I knew right, Bill You was, worked with him at Turner, of course. But I never, I never saw him. So, so Woody, the museum, t- tell me about the museum. Tell us all about the museum and how, I mean, you said it's for just for employees only. What kind of artifacts and, and things of that nature are in that museum for the employees, as you call it, to see? Well, it was a, it was a small museum, but, uh, of course, my favorite thing, so they had the original piano from Casablanca. Oh, wow. uh, they had uh, the, the original Maltese Falcon, one of them anyway. Yeah. You know, there was, there was four. <laughs> There's many of them. <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, they had that, and, and a lot of costumes, yeah. a lot of Bogart costumes, and My well, Fair Lady. Well, how, how in the world, I mean, now speak, you said Casablanca, and that reminded me of something. How did... Or let me. Sorry, you may not even want to tell the story. Something about a chair. That's all I'll say. And you, and I'll lead it on to you to, to tell the story. But somebody we know who's on the phone has contact with a chair from Casablanca. Is that you? Uh, yeah, that was me. But I, I, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I don't have it anymore. I did ah. not have the original chairs from from Rick's Cafe. Yeah. Uh, Right after I retired, I I used to have a large poster collection too. Yes. Yeah. And when I retired, <clears throat> I put everything on the wall that I liked, yeah. and we saw, I sold off a lot of that stuff. And my wife and I went to Europe a couple of times. Yeah, I can, I can imagine because some of the stuff I've seen that's even on your walls now is 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 a ni- nice wall decorations. And and first of all, congratulations. On finding a wife who 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 puts up with that kind of stuff <laughs> that's because true. that's hard to do, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where in the world I've got? Listen, I, you got so many posters and so many lobbies and inserts and half sheets and stuff like that. But where in the world did you come across a, what, is a six sheet Charlie Chan the trap? Where in the world did you find that? Oh well, yeah. You know the six sheets are actually uh, uh, easier yeah. to get. 
that's why they're smaller was because True. most people don't have room for them. Correct. Correct. I have a real, I have a real love of big posters. Yeah. And uh, in my theater, I have uh, uh, three six sheets: yes. the uh, Chalky Chan, the Roy yeah. Rogers, Sons of the Pioneers, and yeah. the Deep Twelve Mile Reef. Uh, they're very colorful. <laughs> yeah, they are. No, they really are. I, I mean, Al's got quite the collection too, but they're not six sheets. Now, I, the the largest posters I have, I have some of your posters. Just an image of them up on the screen now. But uh, the forty by sixties is the largest poster I have. Uh, those were those were uh, those were great posters. My favorites are one sheets. I love one sheets. Yeah, one, one sheets are great. But I've got a, I've got a bunch of one sheets. But I got to so, tell you, I got another thing I'm going to ask. I used to have. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not uh, trying to show off here, but I had an original Houdini banner, and it was, it cost me more to frame that sucker than a poster <laughs> actually cost me. So I can only imagine what a six sheet poster would cost to have framed. Now, do you have any kind of plexiglass over it or, or glass or anything? No, no, I have them. I had them uh, linen back. Ah, oh yeah, linen okay. back. Okay. Yeah. Well, even that's expensive. It is. Even now, that's stupid yeah. money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's not cheap to have linen back, but I did have the six sheets linen back so that it'd be nice and smooth and look real cute. Yes. I didn't have a black, I just have a black wooden frame built around it. Ah, well, see, that makes more sense. That makes well, you know, sense. when you when you linen back a poster, it doesn't take away from the value. But if you have one, you know, dry mounted, it will. I know. But, you know, <laughs> linen back, is some. It, it holds its value. Correct. So, and yeah. I've, got, I've got a Jack Benny poster that I bought linen backed. But I've also got another Jack Benny post, The Horn Blows at Midnight, one sheet, beautiful. Yeah. And the idiot uh, spray mounted it. Oh, uh, well. Still, you still have it, but still, I know, you know. But I'm still, still upset about that. Well, because. Woody, do you have a, a favorite poster? I noticed you have some Charlie Chan. I, I love the old Charlie Chan movies, and um, I noticed you had some Charlie Chan posters. Uh, boy, you know, a favorite poster, uh, that's. That's kind of hard to come up with. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's almost literally impossible. I love the older, you know, the uh, uh, the old ones that are um, uh, in the 30s and 40s. Of right. The Mentioned in Jack Benny, I have a great three sheet on artists and models. I, I, yes, great yeah, I, I did. I seem like I saw that in a documentary. As somebody was standing in front of me, maybe it was you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, it's in the back of my family room. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it's, it's just. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's the, okay. uh, I, I, the artwork. The artwork on those early posters. Are just oh, they're insane. amazing! They're amazing. I, I had some again that was from the thirties. You know, Pur Puritan pictures was one of them. Um, cosmopolitan pictures. Uh, and there was one other one, and they were just obscure titles that you'd never heard of, but they were so colorful, and the the, the artwork was just amazing. So I'm with you on that. I, I you know it does. It's not so much title, title, title. It's like wow, this one really catches your eye. You know, some of those posters are better than the movie. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's Absolutely. true. Because, you know, some posters, yeah, they were better than the movies. The yes. artwork is fantastic oh, yeah. on some of them. Yeah, I, I've got one called Remember Pearl Harbor. And the guy's shaking his fist at the at the camera, but it's really just an yeah. artist rendering. And and the poster looks great, but um, the movie's not very good. <laughs> so you're right. You're right about that. But, but no, I, I just like, I love you know, movie posters. Since I worked in the theater business, you know, I would always, uh, when the movie changed, I was I'll always keep the, the one sheets. Yeah. But back in the early days, when I first got a job in the theater, and you too, Woody, you had to return a lot of the posters to national screen. They did, you couldn't keep them like, you know, the lobby cards and the, um, the stills and the half sheets and the insert posters and even the one sheets. You, could, you couldn't keep right. them. You know, but now for theaters, they just make the one sheets. But you know, some theaters today, Woody, they don't even have the one sheets. They have a, digital, a, yeah. a video screen of the post. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's the that's the way it's going. Just like the actual film is hard to come by as well. Yeah. So you so you went from uh, Virginia, and you went to the uh, Harold Lloyd um, estate, and then and then you went to the museum after that. So that, well, that's. That was a there's a lot in between. I didn't oh, I'm go sure. to the museum until after I retired. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, there's a. Uh, I went to the. Uh, I went to the the Lloyd Estate. It lasted two years, and then I was out of work. So I studied real estate and did uh, worked with the uh, local union protectionist union right. as a relief protectionist. Ah, okay. Uh, all over, all over L.A. Now, now, did you work at the Egyptian any or any of the other more popular? 
uh, theaters that that are known by all the fans of movies, whether it's uh, Grommans or, or it's not Grommans anymore. It's Man's Chinese oh, yeah. and yeah. But uh, yeah, here's, here's here's the good story. I'll give you the the good story first. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, I'm working all over town. Uh, they would send me out to porno houses. Oh god! Oh my goodness! Uh, well, you know, anywhere they needed me. Yeah. And so one day the uh, the uh, guy that runs the uh, that puts the guys everywhere said, that, "Do you know how to run seventy millimeter?" And of course, I said yes. I never run seventy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> he says the uh, the projection is at the Cinerama Dome Ooh. is going on vacation for a week, and I need somebody to fill it. Oh yeah, I'll take it. Uh, so I just went. I went down there for a couple of nights, and it, you know, seventy is not much different. It's just a, a little bit of threading differences. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I went to the dome, and uh, uh, and in two days I started working at wow. the Cinderella Dome, running uh, Logan's Run in seventy millimeter. Oh, with Michael York. Well, how hey. was how was your experience running seventy millimeter? Because those reels are heavy. I mean, they're not they're not light, and I, and I know you didn't have the platter system then. Did you have two well, people that, helping you? Was it two people in the booth or just one? No, just one. But oh I, wow, I was, in, I was in my sixties, so. Uh, I, I, you know, I was still pretty healthy and yeah. good. I, I never had a problem. Uh, I, I, I had a very embarrassing moment uh, that, I, that I had in my first uh, week of running seventy millimeter. Uh, on a, uh, after a changeover and a thread up, I forgot to lock the bottom reel. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, mercy. And it so I changed over. Uh, I changed over. Everything was fine. Got the other. All of a sudden, I hear a huge bang, and the bottom reel just fell. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> it's Woody, it's Chance speaking. Did you uh, have any experience with Cinerama projection? Uh, no. Okay. No. But, I, but I love Cinerama. All right. So when that when that reel hit the floor, first of all, what did you think? Tell tell us what was going through your mind. Because <laughs> we well, in my in my thirty five millimeter experiences. I've had that. I've had a, a break in the film before. Right, right. And, and it's a thirty-five millimeter. Uh, you can actually tear the film and thread up while the machine's running. You yes. can still. That's true because it was acetate stock. You could break it. You know. Yeah. But yeah. seventy millimeter, you can't break it. Uh, yeah. And, and films I later became on polyester, and you couldn't tear that either. So I found that real quick, and I had to grab the scissors and cut the film. Oh. Off. Wow! Wow! But uh, you know what? Nobody ever said anything. No, of course not. I I remember I remember the first real uh, one of the first movies I put together was a Fifth Element with Bruce Willis, and because I didn't listen to Al, I wasn't careful. One of the reels came, I think it was tails out or something was wrong. Here comes a real change. All of a sudden, everything's upside down, playing backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, well, it's, I like Woody. I always like when I built prints up. I always like for the print to come in tails out because what I did, I would build the movie up on uh, large six thousand foot reels. And it would be three or four, and that way I could put the whole movie on two reels and then wind it on the platter that way instead of individual reels. I always built it up on one reel. And, and, but I always like the film to come in tails out. I remember a film broke in the middle of Titanic. It was terrible. Right when the ship went down, the film broke. The lights came up in the movie house, and people were mad. They were so livid. And uh, and it actually happened a couple times because that was, of course, a three-hour movie. So the platters were really heavy. And I don't have any experience as a projectionist myself except for 16 millimeter, big film collector. These guys are the ones, as you obviously, Woody, know about how big those platters are. And, boy, that was... That was a scene back in 97 when that film broke, right when the ship went down. Yeah, I, I didn't care. I mean, I, I, I built the print up of the Titanic. And we played that movie for so long, I got tired of it. Because yeah. you know, it was it. number one for like 13, 14 weeks. Yeah. yeah. Well, Woody, uh, getting back to uh, your, 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 uh, your days as working in the movie theaters and stuff, tell us how the cliffhangers came about. Tell, tell us how that, you know, you and your friends decided to get together. Give us a little history of that. Did we lose Woody? Woody. We were able to see it at the theater, but, but we did we did see it on my uh, bigger TV at, uh, at home, which is 
which is only a, a paltry 50, 50 some inch. <laughs> so, you know, I guess compared to yours and what Al has in his basement, he's got a couple of digital projectors. And I got a digital projector too. But I just don't have it really hooked up to anything. All right, we're back. Of anything important. So we're back on Facebook. We're not, we're not recording yet. We're, we're back on Facebook. Okay, Facebook, delay. Facebook folks. We're sorry that we got kind of interrupted, but sometimes Comcast has to have that bandwidth. And we uh, we uh, lost Woody. We lost the uh, program. And we apologize. And we're sorry that we haven't seen this in two parts now. Yeah. But we got Woody back on the horn here with us. He's from Los Angeles. And uh, what part of Los Angeles are you in? I mean, is it west or is it what what, what neck of the woods are you uh, are you located? I'm in, uh, I'm in Glendale, which is just the, next to Burbank. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. One beautiful downtown Burbank. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey Woody, I noticed I noticed that you uh in, in your in your special that you mentioned the Smokehouse restaurant. You know, well, I, I I worked there briefly when I was out there at the Smokehouse. Wow. Is it still there? Oh yeah. Wow. Because it, well, it's not far from Warner Brothers. Wow. Yeah. yeah. It's right next. To, it's right across the street from Warner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. so uh, that's this where I got a, I worked out there for a while. That's that pretty. It's pretty amazing. Now, now the interesting part about where where Woody lives. I don't want to tell you where he lives, but but there is a, there's an interesting Betty Davis connection. Uh, now that we've got him back on the horn, he can help us understand and help you understand the, the good folks listening and watching. Uh, Woody, why don't you share yeah, with us a little us bit about that. That's a terrific the story. Betty Davis connection? Did you ever? First of all, did you ever meet Betty Davis? Uh, no. Okay. No. All right. I didn't think you did, but go ahead and tell yeah, us about that. Back? Are we back on yet? Yes. Oh yeah, we're we're back. Yeah. Are you recording yes. the audio? Cool. Yeah, we're I back. I don't see it on Facebook. Okay. It is. It, if you go to the Facebook page, Nostalgic Pod Blast, the Nostalgic yeah. Pod Blast, it's pinned at the top. I just pinned the second part of our interview to the top of the page. Uh, I, I, I you probably it. need to refresh. It's back. Yeah, I, I kind of did. Okay. All right. Well, that's, that's all right. Let's go. Uh, uh, Betty Davis. All right. Let's talk to Betty Davis. Yeah. My home is built on the front of her old home <laughs> where her, she had a corral with her, her uh, Arabian horses. Wow. And my home is built in that corral. Well, it's hard to believe she had Arabian horses, though, to be honest with you. Now, we're showing yeah. that original house, Woody, her original house on, on Facebook now. Uh, it'll come yeah, up it's shortly. Right, it's, it, it sort of sits actually in my backyard. Wow. Yeah, her, well, it was just one of her homes. She used it. It's only 10 minutes to Warner Brothers. So uh, she used, when she was filming at Warner Brothers, she probably stayed in this house yeah. uh, close to work because she had homes in Beverly Hills and all over. She had two or three homes. Wow. That, that, but, the, but, the old, but the old original home is still there. Wow. Now, now some, somebody obviously lives in it now, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a private home. Now. Right. Okay. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's it's fun. It's been it's been kind of fun being there. It's just very popular with my friends. Sometimes wow. I can take them over there and show them around. That's pretty cool. That's that's pretty that's pretty. Nifty. We're showing photos of your home now on our on our video. Well, Betty Davis's home. Betty Davis's house. Yeah, that's great. So so is it, so you look out your back window, you see it, or or do you see it at all? Well, no, I've from got, your property. I've got a, uh, I've got it's, I can look through the bushes, but I've got I have put up. Uh, uh, trees all around the back of my house. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, because, because you got to have privacy too, man. I mean, come on. Who actually? <laughs> now, who lives in that house now? That where Betty Davis once lived. Well, I, I, I you know, it's a, a band that's actually from England and owns a uh, insurance company. I mean, we're not really buddies or anything, but he's very nice. If I want to come over there, you know, yeah. to bring, I want to bring a friend over. That's nice. Just to see the outside of the house. I don't. I don't want to take people in. No, I think he's, he's he's changed the inside a little bit. I think yeah. you know. Well, do you or, actually live near any other people in the in the movie business where you live now? Uh well, uh, you know, it's not not that I really know of. We we had many people down here. Pam Hunter just lived up the street, and uh, 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 a couple of uh, older stars, but you know, Pam Hunter, wow. We don't want to know where everybody is. We don't yeah. know where all of them live. Right, but, right. Uh, I think I think you can buy maps. <laughs> just, yeah. just kidding. Well, that's, 
Yeah, usually if you go to Beverly Hills, they'll sell you a map. Oh, they sure will. <laughs> They sure will. <laughs> I say it's it's ironic because the, the years I was going to Los Angeles we were there for the the week prior to the Academy Awards and etc. I would I would go and visit the uh, cemeteries. I knew nobody would bug me there. <laughs> yeah, so, right. yeah. Although although you know there are some cemeteries that won't let you in the mausoleum and stuff like that, but it's kind of funny. I, it's kind of like I made I you made a book uh, of where they where everyone's at, and so. Uh, but then there's been many books since then, uh, which, which, which was the only sightseeing I ever, ever really did uh, there. Is I, you know, went to went, went to the normal places, saw the Cinerama Dome, et cetera, et cetera. Now, when you ran seventy millimeter, were obviously you had run thirty five. So when you got when you saw how big those suckers were, and how many how many reels how many reels was that film that you ran? How how many reels was? It? Do you remember? Uh, you know, not exactly, but so, there. Because uh, Logan's run thirty-five. There was like between seven and nine reels. Yeah. Okay. Because you know? I, I remember yeah. Al Al ran uh, had to put together a print of, of Lawrence of Arabia in seventy millimeter, and I remember seeing I got a picture of him sitting on top of all the cases, and there was a ton of them. I think I mean, it was like well, yeah, because, I, I think it was like yeah, twelve or thirteen was, cases. You know, it was. I a, think that ran about three or three and a half. Yeah. Hours, yeah. My yeah, gosh. Right. Well, you know, well, speaking of uh, uh, Lawrence of Arabia, I, you know, the story you have about the, getting a letter from one of my favorite actors, Peter O'Toole, just blew me away. Uh, it, it tell our audience, I mean, how that came about, because I think that that letter is just a real treasure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, he um, he had made that. Uh, uh, my mind is going a little blank here. Uh, that film. Uh, uh, it was it, it was a TV movie he he did he didn't have a copy of it or something. Yeah, it, right. yeah, he didn't, and uh, uh, it'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, I heard that he didn't have a good copy of it. Right. And uh, oh, I remember 1976 Nazi Hunter. It was like a Nazi. I have it in my notes. Uh, Continue. I'll, I'll find it. I'm looking at it too. Uh, had everything written down but that. He was going to assassinate. <laughs> he was going to assassinate his character Adolf Hitler. It was a fascinating movie. It was a television yeah. movie from 1976, starring yeah, Peter O'Toole. Yeah, yeah, yeah a, British, uh, a British television <clears throat> movie. Yeah. Well, had, had, and, and then you had a copy of it, and you sent it to Peter O'Toole, and he sent you a nice return letter thanking you for the movie. Correct. Right, and uh, well, I heard about it. His attorney contacted me because uh, uh, I had written down so uh, that I could get an original copy, and so I only dealt with his attorney originally. And uh, uh, so I, I, I got the film and I had it uh, transferred to what he wanted right. and sent it off to the attorney. And the only thing I requested was a signed autograph. I said, "Give me a, a photo of, of, of Peter." Uh, with a signature. Yeah. Well, wow. a few weeks later, I get a certified envelope in the mail uh, that uh, from Turner Classic Movies. Oh, wow! That they're that they're having they're going to honor him at the Turner Classic Festival here in Los Angeles in Hollywood. Yeah. And that Peter has requested that I be invited. Oh, wow! And spend How the day cool. with. Uh, Spend the day there. So, wow, that's fantastic. Oh, the movie's Rogue Mail, by the way. Rogue Mail, that's right. <laughs> I don't know why. Well, I, I, have, I have a picture of Peter O'Toole posted up, and I'll show one from Lawrence of Arabia. I, I just think that's incredible. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I like a lot of movies, a lot of actors, but Peter O'Toole's always been a favorite, absolute favorite. So he did invite, invite my wife and I to the, the, the handprint at the Chinese Theater. Right. And uh, we got front row seats right there wow. with him. And then he, then he invited us to lunch at Moose and Frank with a few close oh, friends. That's and, great. And so it was really great. Yeah. Oh, was, wow. uh, uh, he, we talked with him. He was he real. I mean, he was really a nice person. Yeah. Well, see, see, when I worked at Turner, uh, I did all the uh, Robert Osborne. I did, I did a lot of them. And I got to meet a lot of stars. Uh, uh, through doing that, uh, his interviews that he did, you know, from Mickey Rooney yeah. to James Garner to Ben uh, to Charlton Heston to Betty Hutton, um, I mean, a bunch of people. And it's interesting to find out when you meet someone close up like that how uh, how personable they are, 
and I'm glad to hear Peter O'Toole was was not a, a, a snob, a jerk, yeah. or whatever you want to call it. No, yeah, no, he was he was very down to earth, <clears throat> and I mean, for me to get a six page, six page handwritten letter, I know for me was, exactly. Uh, you know, and it's just a, it really was amazing. Wow. Yeah, I would cherish that letter forever. That's just, that's that's a great great thing to have. Now, have you know, got that framed up by chance, or you still got it just put away somewhere? No. It's right here on my desk. Uh, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of hard to frame up because it's two sided. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. He yeah, just flipped yeah, the paper yeah. over. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So uh, well, just get a good color copier and, 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 and copy the second half or something. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, that's 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 amazing! A six-page letter. I mean, I, I know in the documentary we see you uh, looking at the letter, et cetera, et cetera. It's pretty pretty darn impressive. Yeah, well, he explained in the letter, you know, why the movie was important to it. You know, I we, most people didn't know that that at that time uh, that that film before that film was made, he was really expected to die. He oh. had some kind of some kind of disease that, that they didn't think he was going to pull through. Wow! Mm. And he did, and he did finally get well. And uh, this director wanted him to come and make this movie for the, as the first one coming back from the illness. Yeah. Now, so, as this, now, as this says in a documentary, in your documentary, I should say, or uh, that it, it talked about also, why was his autobiography? mostly about Hitler, and it had a lot of Hitler this and Hitler that in it, because that was his childhood, apparently. That's so. right, yeah. yeah. He, I mean, <laughs> in Europe, and the Inkerman, and yeah. he, was, he lived through all that. He sure did. And, and he played a terrific a terrific Nazi in Night of the Generals. Yeah, he one, did. Of, one of my favorite yeah, movies, Night of the General. I have a one sheet for it downstairs in my theater, yeah. but I, I love that movie. Line of the Generals. Yeah. I liked him in a movie that you guys won't give two flips about Supergirl from 1984. And Jerry Goldsmith did the music. You know, it's kind of like Wonder Woman 84. Mediocre movie, but the music was incredible. Well, anyway, I, and Peter I, O'Toole starred in it. I'm sure, pretty, pretty sure Peter O'Toole would say, you got to make some money. Exactly. I did it for the money, okay? <laughs> got to make some money. i, I got to pay the rent. <laughs> Well, uh, we got started on the uh, on the cliffhangers, and I, how did you have you guys reacted during the pandemic? Have you have you actually? Um... He told us earlier he hasn't done it in a year. Oh, okay, that's right. I'm sorry. I was, okay. I was busy. But, but he may want to expand on it. I'm just reminding yeah, I'm, you. I'm just thinking, I mean, once everything sort of gets back to normal, I guess you guys can all get back together and everything, correct? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, everybody wants to. I've been in touch with all of them, and uh, uh, it's uh, we we're chomping at the bit. Well, well, have you thought about doing? Uh, uh, not may I be so bold to suggest uh, uh, to maybe instead of all six, eight, nine, or however many. I know one of uh, you just had one pass away. God rest his soul. But I have a picture of them in front of the Gromans Chinese. Theater. Yes, I, yeah. 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 And, and um, are you have you thought about doing it in in in, in shifts, so to speak? Like only three of you can come. Or right, here's the lottery drawing, and here are the three. You know, <laughs> or anything weird like that. I mean, that's what I would. I mean, because to watch the documentary and to see the camaraderie that you had, that you that you continue to have. No offense to anyone listening, COVID or no COVID, put the mask on and let's, let's do it. Although I know, I'm sure it's not that maybe maybe it's not quite that easy in California. I don't really know. Yeah, it's not that, it is pretty bad here. I mean, we yeah. we are still very limited, and uh, uh, I don't have you know we once once they're all vaccinated, maybe true, we will. true. True, and, and and luckily, and that's the only lucky thing about all of our ages. I'm talking about me and now. I can't talk about chance, but all of our ages is we're at that age group where they, in theory, will vaccinate us first. Like, yeah, I got my first vaccination this past Wednesday, and I get the next one on March the 12th. So, you know, but Woody, I'm, I'm like you. I don't get out very much. I stay at home and, and watch <laughs> movies and enjoy my toys at home. So I really don't get out that much. So and, why'd you get the shot then? Because I just because I can. You cool. Know, Good you answer. Know, yeah. And yeah. so, I you just never know. Yeah, you never because chance, chance could happen. You know, you <laughs> you could you, you could go to the supermarket and be around somebody. That's you know? true. Yeah. Absolutely. So, hey Woody, I mean, when the theaters were open in uh, L.A. and your surrounding area, did you ever go to the movies? I mean, did you frequent the theater, or did you just kind of stay at home and watch movies with the cliffhangers? Well, I did go to the movies only because I got to go free. Yeah. <laughs> 
Right, right. I don't. I'm not paying. <laughs> I don't want to pay fifteen dollars a ticket. To of course you don't. No. Wow, fifteen dollars a ticket, man. That's expensive. <laughs> Some of them are 18 here. I mean, it's expensive here. Well, the prices here vary. <laughs> Chance and I go to the movies sometimes. And we go on Tuesdays where it's 5 bucks, and, uh, and then We at, used to. At the AMC theaters, yeah. yeah. But, but now the theaters here in the Atlanta area are open, and uh, most of them run, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and they're closed Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. But there's some None theaters... Of Huh? None of our theaters are open. No That's kidding. Just, wow. I, 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 I'm surprised. Oh, wow. In California, they're locked down, buddy. Wow. Uh, at, uh, have you been to Atlanta, Georgia, Woody, ever? Uh, are you familiar with the Fox Theater in Atlanta? I'd love to. It's one of my favorite theaters, but I'd love to go see it. Yeah. yeah, that's of course where they had the Gone with the Wind premiere back in uh, no, thirty nine. The last time, the last time I was at the at the Fox, uh, me and some buddies went and saw the movie <laughs> The Day the Earth Stood Still with the Fox. It was a, uh, it was a retro screening and it was wonderful. See it in that big theater. And they have seventy millimeter there on occasion. But Tom, you're going to correct me on something. Did I just misspeak yes, about did. Gone with yes, the Wind? Correct Gone, me, please. Gone was at the Lowe's Theater. And, uh, 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 I'm Lowe's, thinking of Margaret Mitchell. No longer here. Okay. <laughs> hey, Woody. Speak, speaking of the Lowe's. Uh, uh, when the Lowe's uh, Terra here, we had the Lowe's Terra, the Twin, and the Twelve Oaks. They were all, of course, named after Gone with the Wind. And when the Lowe's Terra Theater opened here in Atlanta in 1969, the first movie they showed in, in, in it wasn't 70, but it was 35, was Gone with the Wind. And uh, they showed that there. I ended up working at the Lowe's Terra uh, for a while as projectionist. It was, it was, Lowe's had sold it by then. It was owned by a local guy. Uh, George LaFont, but I worked at the Terra, and they had 70 millimeter in one house. It started out as one big theater, then they twinned it, and then they added another theater on the end, and it was 70. So we want to invite you to Georgia. If you're here with Sandy, your wife, we'll give you a great tour, won't we, Al? And sure. Tom. Yeah. We'll show you a great time. Yeah. Hey, Woody, uh, you know, speaking of the cliffhangers, I know you liked, you like me, I have a popcorn popper, and you always pop the popcorn and had all the goodies for the guys, right? Right. <laughs> I got a, I got a picture of you at your popcorn popper up on the screen right now. So, You'll see it here shortly. I love it. Yeah, that's on our YouTube channel and our Facebook group, The Nostalgic Pod Blast. I've got questions, but Tom, do you have any questions you want yeah, to continue? I want to I want to continue on about the cliffhangers themselves. So, Good. so how did you go about meeting all of your fellow cliffhangers? How how did that happen over over time in, in, a, in a cliff snow type of manner? How, how did that happen? Because I know. Well, it, it started out with like three of us, <laughs> you know, and just people that love old movies. Right. And before you know it, it just sort of evolved. I mean, somebody, one of them had a friend that liked movies, so it tried. And, you know, it, before you know it, we had a whole group, <laughs> uh, you know. And uh, before I had my home here in 90, I bought this home in 94, I had my theater in my office in Burbank. Right, right. And I could see a lot more people there. I could have like 15 people. Oh, wow. So I had, I would always invite extra people uh, for a Friday night movie and then Saturday for the guys. Right, right. And, uh, and when, I, when, I, when I retired and uh, made the theater in my home, mm -hmm. I only have room for like nine or ten people. Right. So I, I kind of pared it down. <laughs> uh, but it, it evolves very quickly when you get into old movies. And you've got two or three people that like old movies. Well, you know it. Yeah. You've got six people that like old movies. But you know, I like I like the way you you choose the movies. You you don't tell anybody what you're going to run. Now now do you do you always make the choice? Now what I did wasn't clear about. Did you always make the choices, or do you take turns? Like no, the, like this uh, person will uh, bring these I, movies, and you might bring a movie, and you know how, how does that work? About once a year, I let. I, I, each of them just be a list of movies they'd like to see. Right. And each year, uh, I take a week and dedicate it to one of the guys. Ah. But, you know, to ask them what they want to see, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, when you've got nine guys, you say, well, That's what right. do you want to see this week? You got nine different movies they want. That's see. correct. And same, and same problem. I mean, it's just three of us. Yeah. And, and, and sometimes I'll bring Susan. It's four. And, and we have the same problem. It's just four. I can imagine nine people. Wow. And so, so I just put it myself to, uh, to put the, plan the program. And uh, it, it seems to work out. Everybody seems to have a good time. And they, they like it that way, I think. Now, it seems like everyone is, is not allowed, I 
could be wrong about this, is not allowed to talk during the feature or during the movie. Is that true, or are you are you all comment and here and there and? No, no, no. I, I I'm a theater man. I don't right. want anybody talking on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> So, so someone pulls out their phone and wants to Facebook. Hey, I'm I'm watching this movie right now. You want? No, 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 no. You do you shine a flashlight on like an usher? <laughs> yeah. I make them leave the phone downstairs. Oh, you're a smart man. You're so, smart well, you know, I, I have to do that with Chance because Chance is constantly on his phone. That's true. That's true. Hey, Woody, it's Chance speaking. Um, film noir is that still your favorite genre of film as a group? You know, I think so. I, you know, we just love those old black and whites, the, uh, you know, the old Bogarts and the Mitchums and the, the it's it just, it's like out of the past with Mitchum. I yeah. love that film. And uh, Maltese Falcon, right. uh, you know, those type of movies. Bringing up Baby. I, I, I find something good in almost any movie. Yeah. Now, Out of the it Past be, with Robert Mitchum is a great movie. I have a lobby card from it. I have that on DVD. Uh, it's a great movie. I love, love, I love Mitchum. Um, he's, he's great. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, that, I guess so. But my wife and I, we when we have uh, uh, get into newer films, we love the romantic comedies. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, like the Sweet Home in Alabama, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Rich Witherspoon, uh, yeah. you know, the Sleepless in Seattle, mm -hmm. and you've got mail, that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, but you know, but I personally, I really enjoy the nineteen, like the early thirties, into the mid forties. That's my favorite. Well, time there. well, a really difficult question to answer, and I'll ask it. What's your go-to movie? What is what is Woody's go-to movie when he wants to impress the guys? They're over for a cliffhanger session, as I'm going to call it. What what is your go-to film? I mean, you know, what is it? Or is there one? Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be a tough question for me to answer too. Woody, did the internet go down again? No, no. Mm -mm. What are you there? Well, the little we, lights flashing. I think we've lost Woody again. Um, no, no, <laughs> no. I don't see Woody call back. <laughs> the I, internet must be going down again. No, no it's fine. No, the okay. internet's fine. No, no. Um, well, sometimes he was on. I noticed his cell phone was kind of breaking up a little bit. Yeah. So, I mean, it could have been a cell connection. So, I anyway. heard a sound effect in the background. It sounded like an airplane sound effect. A noise. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll share it after. I'm not going to fool with it. It's too distracting. Okay, now we're we're back. We we certainly apologize, but we want to thank the fine folks at Comcast Xfinity for uh, <laughs> dumping us. What three? They're going to the get a call from me tomorrow. This is the third time I believe they've they the internet has gone out on us. Uh, yeah, yeah. In, in an hour and a half or something like that. It's yeah, crazy. third time. Well, we last left Woody. Um, now you asked me a question. My go-to movie. No, no, but I asked Woody. Woody first. Oh, okay. I asked Woody, Woody first, first, and that's when we lost. That's when we found out. Oh, either Woody got mad and hung up on us, <laughs> or <laughs> or <laughs> we lost the internet again. Sure enough, we lost the internet. What are you? Are you still there? I'm here. Okay, I, I humbly, humbly, humbly apologize. Mm -hmm. Your East Coast friends are, have not lost their minds, but it sounds like it. So, Woody, what, what was your go-to film? That was the last thing I said to you before we lost the Internet again. So what is yeah, Woody's go-to movie? If I had to go to one movie to, to pick that would make everybody happy, is that what you mean? Yeah. Yes. I, sh I should have a drum Charlie roll going, Chan. shouldn't I? Which one? Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan. Charlie Chan. Now, now, any of them, too, right? I mean, are you a Cindy Toller man or a Warner Olin? Uh, well, we like Warner Olin and Cindy Toller best, but uh, any of them, really. They, if, if I had to choose to make all of them happy, uh, <laughs> I would just pick, pick a good Charlie Chan. Uh, now, now, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they start out over at Fox and they ended up at uh, MGM? Uh, uh, I think. Well... Well, the, uh, the, they started at Fox, and they were much better production value. Right, at yeah. Fox. Uh, you know, Warner Owen and the very first uh, two Cindy Tollers, I think, were, were uh, all pretty, or their, their production values were, were high. Yeah. Uh, when, they, when the monogram took them over, 
when they went to monogram. That's right. Uh, they, they didn't have as much money, uh, but uh, they they still are very good little <laughs> films. You so, know, they're still good. So, uh, do you, you know, have you watched The Trap? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, we seen it. Oh, cool. oh okay. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Because <laughs> after all, you I mean, do have I this. Think, Go ahead. I think over the last eight, ten years, we've watched every one of them. Oh, wow. Now, I know no, I, no. I I personally have every one of them on, on a digital format, all of them, um, and, and they're all enjoyable. And, of course, sadly, there are varying qualities because uh, they're just not out there. All of them are not yeah. out there. And I'm sure yours, is too, has got uh, different quality um, uh, things on it. But I know I had a 16 print that Al and I went to a, a, a mutual, it was Al's friend, and we went and, and uh, he, he was had, a big film collector. His name was Clyde. He, yeah. was, he was a big film collector. And he had passed, Clyde Carroll. He yeah. had passed away, and his wife was selling off of, you know, some of the stuff. And I remember I got a print. I, you know, I don't remember the name of it, but it was gorgeous. I mm -hmm. mean, for 16 millimeter, it's the best focused. I mean, it was amazing. How well, good. the early the early 16 millimeter films were done with yeah. great quality. It was not a know. TV print. <laughs> it was definitely not a TV print. Yeah. Well, I mean, so Charlie Chan is Woody's go-to. Do you have a go-to movie? I, I, you know, I. It's funny you you ask me that. Do I have a go-to? You know, almost pretty much any film I put up and put on at that time is my go-to. Right. That's true. Same with me. Yeah, I don't. That's what I, I will say. Chance. What about yours? You guys are gonna laugh. Star Trek IV: The Voyage Home with the whales. I just love it. That's what got me into Star Trek and turned me into an eternal nerd. Oh, well, there you go. And right. it had Kirk's love of his life, Doctor Gillian Anderson. Go ahead, Taylor. Oh, there you go. <laughs> well, hey, Woody, do you do you and your wife kind of watch a movie a week or just whenever you feel like it? Now that uh, uh, the guys aren't coming over right now, do you, do you? I mean, do you just like say, okay, we're going to watch this tonight, or you just? So every uh, every Friday night. We oh, okay, go to the okay. I make popcorn, wow. and my wife and I, and my two dogs sit in there and watch a movie. Amazing. Oh, that's fantastic. So what, who came up with the name Cliffhangers? Was it, was it you, or was it, was it the whole gang, or was it someone else? Well, the, the very first three, the very first guy that, that watched movies with me just loved the serials. He was in the Flash Gordon, right. the mainly Flash Gordon. And they were fun. And they were fun. Loved the movie serials. And so when two or three of us got together... Uh, we just sort of haphazardly, uh, this was before the internet actually, I mean, yeah. nobody knew, this, we just kind of got together and uh, we started calling ourselves the cliffhangers. That's so great. I ran the, every time we got together, <clears throat> I ran the chat. When, when, when are the t-shirts coming out? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> The T-shirt says, that "I'm a cliffhanger," or "I have been." The, I it's a shame your name's like Cliff. I've been to Cliffs, and I'm a member of the Cliffhangers. You know. Well, Woody, I have to ask you a question and see if we can. Uh, you know, because me, Tom, and Chance, and and sometimes his wife Susan shows up, and we watch movies over here, downstairs, and we need to come up with a name for our group. Can we be called the Cliffhangers too? <laughs> I'm just joking. Cliffhangers East Coast. E cliffhangers East Coast. Yeah. Well, if you run cereal, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I have I, I, I have a bunch of cereals on on DVD. Buck Rogers, a, you have Buck I Rogers. Have a, yes, I have Flash a, Gordon. I have a Flash Gordon. Ooh. I have Undersea Kingdom. I have mm -hmm. uh, SOS Coast Guard. I think with Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Westerns. Mm, not sure I have a Western on. You know, but they're easily obtainable. You can buy them off eBay. Yeah. Well, you know, the Westerns, the Westerns are great. Of course, I go to Lone Pine every year for the Lone Pine. That's, that's right. I saw that in your special. Yeah. Oh. And uh, it's just great up there. Now, do you, do you run films and DVDs there, or, or what, what uh, are you doing there? We used, to, we used to run both, but now, that you know, to have a, a good projector that runs all the time, not easy. Yeah, that's true. I have some I'll, and, I'll, I'll send you away. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Woody. Well, I have to ask you a nerdy question. I mean, because I, I, you know, I like I like projectors and stuff like that. I know you're on digital and Blu-rays and DVDs. What kind of digital projector do you own? Uh, I have a, uh, uh, a uh, HG. H H HG. Yeah, a HG. Oh, okay. I have uh I have several. Which I, I was going to say, which one do you want to tell me about? Well, it's an LG, not HG. Yeah, I thought LG. it was. I was going to say LG, but I certainly didn't LG. want to correct our, our guest. Right, LG. Well, I have an Epson. I like Epson products. I also have some Sanyo projectors, but I like Epson. 
I, I just bought a new Epson projector off Amazon, and it gives it a stunning picture. It really does. I really like well, it. I love it. I've had mine for a few years, and I love it. And as long as it keeps giving me a great picture, I, I'm oh, not yeah. worry. Now, now, do you watch regular TV on that same system as well, or just movies? I used to, but I, I, when I did some changeovers, I don't have my connection up there anymore. Gotcha. Uh, I, I, number one, I don't have cable anymore. I got rid of cable and went to Fire Sticks. Yay for you. Uh, good, good for you. Good. Screw Xfinity. <laughs> That's right. And, yeah, I'm saving about 100 bucks a month on going to Fire Sticks. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, it's it's you know that's, that's what I need to do. I've I've have cable, but you know I don't watch a whole lot of it to be honest with you. But uh, you know it's just uh, you know I like to keep. I don't run TV in my theater because I like to keep it as a theater. I like to watch movies down there. I don't I don't run TV shows or things downstairs. I just watch that on a regular TV. I don't know. I just like yeah. Well, basically, you know, that's all I do now too. Also, right. I I've just got, go ahead. I like the big screen experience with a movie and not just a TV show. You know? I've got some questions, if I may. Um, I was really impressed with Tim Walker, okay, one of the cliffhangers who's an animator. And his story is very, very incredible, how he overcame some serious odds. Um, he was struck with Parkinson's disease, and it affected his ability to draw with his right hand. And he was born right-handed. Yeah. And so he had to learn how to animate with his left hand. And he, in fact, wrote a book. And I know it's come up, but I'll, I just want to bring it up again for anyone out there. Drawing from the left. It reminds me of a classic book, Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, by Betty Edwards. Yeah. And, uh, and I just think that's a great story about overcoming odds. And, that that and, is. That's a great story. And he worked. What, what, tell us uh, what studios is, is uh, Tim Walker affiliated with or has been affiliated with? Well, uh, I, I've got to remember because uh, when I first met him, he was drawing the, uh, the Flintstones. Yes. Uh -huh. <sighs> And I'm, I kind of was trying to think of what studio that was, but Hanna-Barbera. Hanna Barbera. Was, a basic studio was Warner Brothers, and uh, yeah. he worked at Warner Brothers for 50 years. Wow. Yeah, he did the Sylvester and Tweety Mysteries in 1995. That's what he did. But he, he is an amazing person, and yeah. uh, uh, for him to teach himself to draw with his left hand, he still work at Warner Brothers doing Warner Brothers stuff, uh, you know, you have to be pretty darn good. No, that's Amen. an amazing story. Excellent. It, it did Samurai Jack, Batman, A Mask of the, uh, of the Phantasm, and uh, he, he's done a lot of stuff. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, what was what was the uh, what was the learning curve for him? I wonder. It's 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 kind of like you know, you, you, it, it's, it's like if you would tell me, hey, starting tomorrow, you have to start writing with your left hand. My gosh, no learning curve. Come on. Did, did, I wonder. If, I wonder if his employers gave him a learning curve, or did he just kind of, I, I don't want to say covered it up, but just kind of went, well, I can do this and do that. How, how did that? How did that transpire for him? Well, if you actually, uh, you probably haven't. I don't know if you watched all of Brothers of the Pop. Yeah, yeah, we all did. Oh, we all did. Yes. And, uh, he teach. He said, you know, he he just bought a book and started doodling with his left hand. Yeah. And uh, until he could get it right. Yeah, I remember. I remember. Yeah, I remember. Up. Yeah, I remember. He, he as it went along, it said, you know, day one. Mm -hmm. here's, here's what this character looks like. Here's day. Here's week two or whatever. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And uh, that was. I know he's retired, but is he still drawing? Oh yeah. Okay. He's He's got a new web page, I think, called Timmy Tunes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think he's selling some of his art on there. Right. Timmy Tunes, I have to remember that. He said something really cool, too. He said that a blank page is the most intimidating thing an artist faces. Yeah. And, yeah. and for him to overcome, not I mean, to be suffering from Parkinson's and then still to be able to draw Amazing. and learn how to teach, teach your body how to draw... Yeah. Amazing. And another hand, that's incredible. Absolutely amazing. With another well, hand. What about it's some either, of the... You know, it's either that or give up, you know? And well, he's, yeah. He's really... That's hey. how to got to give up. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought no one awesome. likes a quitter. Yeah. I thought it was also impressive that he had an original Hanna-Barbera drawing table uh, in his house, it looked like, uh, is, is what he was using, an animation table. So I thought that was kind of cool, too, that he was able to take that with him, so to speak, or buy it or however he, however he acquired it. Hey, Woody, another question. Your production company, um, the Predator, is it Predator Films, who did your documentary, are you affiliated with them, or did they contact you? How did the documentary Brotherhood, Brotherhood of the Popcorn come about? Yeah, uh, 
Predator Productions is owned by uh, a young lady named Inda Reed, I-N-D-A Reed, and R-E-I-D. And uh, what happened was, how this all started was, she uh, was at a coffee shop, and two of my cliffhangers, uh, Rocky and Bill, were sitting there talking, and she overheard them talking about trying to get Woody to show a movie this week. And she wanted to know what they were talking about. So they told her about the, told her about the cliffhanger. Fantastic. And, uh, and she says, well, this sounds great. It sounds like something I should make a movie about. Wow. <laughs> so she came to see me and came to a couple of meetings. And before you know it, we were filming Brotherhood of the Popcorn. And it's, it's an amazing, it's amazing to watch. I really enjoyed it. I've watched it twice now. And it's just, it's just really, and really she, good. And she started the whole thing. She photographed it. She edited it. She wrote it. She did everything. The production values are phenomenal. Oh, it looks like something on PBS. It looks like a Ken Burns production, for goodness no, sakes. Quite, the production value is, is top notch. She did a fantastic job. Where can people watch it? Pardon? Where can people watch Brotherhood of the Popcorn? I've seen it's on Blu-ray. Where can people purchase a copy? Oh, it's, 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 it's on Amazon. Uh, you can uh, rent it or, or stream it on Amazon. Uh, or also on uh, FlixHouse.com. Very good. And Very good. May I ask, what was the budget for that documentary? If you don't want to answer, that's cool. I'm just I'm, I'm a numbers guy. I'm just curious. Was it a pretty decent budget? Ballpark? Well, let me tell you something. It took us... Um, it took us, I think, eight years, seven to eight years to finish it. God, wow. we, uh, we mostly did that out of our own plastic pockets. The only big donation we had was from a company here that's owned by my stepson called Castex Rentals, which does motion picture rentals. Uh, they gave us a, a pretty good uh, donation. Mm -hmm. But I would say that we did that whole film for under 25000 that's pretty cool. cheap. That's, That's pretty, pretty cheap. cheap. Cool. Yeah. Another That's question. Well, yeah. What? Hey, uh, Woody. You, I know. I saw that you guys do chili cook-offs. Quick question: Beans in the chili? Yes or no? <laughs> do what? When I heard, I saw that you guys do a chili cook-off occasionally, right? Oh. Do you I put beans in the chili or not? I'm just curious. I'm just trying to set a little friendly bet with somebody. I'm not understanding you completely. Do, do I use what? Do you put beans in your chili that you make as an ingredient? Booze? Beans. <laughs> beans. Oh, beans. <laughs> beans. Yes, I like beans. Okay. I like I like chili. I like chili anyway. I like chili regardless. <laughs> I, I've, never, I've never been a chili I didn't like. Oh, <laughs> good enough. Well, then you've never been to the varsity. <laughs> no, just Come to Atlanta and go to the bars. Yeah, 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 don't do that. Woody, uh, have you ever been to the Western Film Fair? Have you ever taken Sandy uh, back east to Charlotte, North Carolina, by chance? I attended it in 2005, and it was a lot of fun. Just wondering. No, no, okay. we, we have no. We have a great restaurant here that's been here forever in Burbank called the Chili Bowl. Oh, that's chili. the best. Oh, okay. Well, cool. Well, Woody, I, I can't tell you how much of a pleasure it's been talking to you, even though we had to break away a couple of times because of the Internet. It's been a sure pleasure, and I, I'm glad we're friends now because I want to keep in touch with you. Is that okay? Uh, as much as you like, I'd love that. Oh, that's <laughs> terrific. And we'd like to have you back again sometime. We need to wrap things up, but we'd like to have you back again sometime if that's okay with you. Oh, I'd love it too. Yes, I'd have a great time. And 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 next time, uh, bring bring one of the one of the other cliffhangers with you. That yes, would be great. And, yes, uh, we could we could certainly uh, open up even more broader as to as to what you guys are are doing. Yeah, because, I could I could I could have uh, Tim Walker or any of you know here as a as a guest. With yeah, me. great, great. You know who you look like, Woody? To me, Gene Hackman. Anyone ever tell you that? Oh, Gene Hackman? You look like Gene Hackman. I do? I think so. <laughs> well, there you go, Woody. <laughs> it's, his name is now Woody Gene Wise. And, and did you guys talk about the connection with Robert Osborne that you all shared? Yeah, we, okay. we talked about I, that, I, yeah. All right, I'm, I was distracted. I just yeah, want to make sure that got covered. That. That's but, uh, yeah, the show is going to be available. I'm going to put it together tomorrow in audio form also, and uh, I can send you a copy through uh, email or whatever, and uh, it'll be available Great. up on YouTube and Facebook uh, after tomorrow.
All right. But Woody, we, we really appreciate you spending the time and, <laughs> and putting up with the stupid old internet we have here on the East yeah. Coast. Mm. Uh, do, do, and, and I'm sure you have internet where you're at, and hopefully you don't have the same kind of issues we have. <laughs> no. Woody, you got a website? How can people find you? Uh, well, mostly just Facebook. Okay. okay. Yeah, I, don't, I don't have a website, no. Uh, well, Brotherhood of the Popcorn has a website. Oh, good. Brotherhood of the Popcorn.com. Oh, cool, cool. Brotherhood of the Popcorn.com. Brotherhood of the Popcorn, uh, the of the popcorn uh, is on Facebook. And, of course, I'm on Facebook. I love Facebook. You're right. a treasure. I, I, You're need, a, I need to send you a friend request. So I'll. Oh, no, no. What, what, what am I saying? We are friends. <laughs> okay, okay. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Just forget that. Oh, no. well, uh, I, I just want to say you're a treasure. And, you know, I get tired of people my age saying, oh, the movie's in black and white. I don't want to see it. No. We love everyone on the Nostalgic Pod Blast loves classic golden age of Hollywood films. And we're happy you were here. And, uh, man, we love. Every one of the cliffhangers. Thanks for being a part of the show. And we're now, Thanks, we're now, Thank we're you. now starting the Cliffhangers East Coast Club. How's that, Woody? <laughs> the, the Cliffhangers East Coast Club. We'll do that. <laughs> okay, buddy. Woody, we will talk to you soon, my friend, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, we won't be a stranger to each other. Okay, great. Thank you, Woody. It's been Take a sheer pleasure. Thanks, Woody. Okay, bye, bye. Well, that was fantastic. Hopefully the cliffhangers can get back together soon and then yeah. start enjoying their pleasure of their company and their films. No, Woody, Woody was a great guest, and so um, I'll be calling Comcast tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. That, that threw everything off a little bit, but what a what a pleasant guy, knowledgeable guy, and there's still so much more I wanted to ask him, but we'll do it next time, right? We'll do it next time. All right. All right. Till next time, folks. Well, we, we got a, one more thing in Correction Corner real quick. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, right. you, you, you have a, what, a one more thing? Just a quick one more thing. Are you? <laughs> what is that? Well, you know, we all like, uh, you remember uh, the big top? Uh, oh, gosh, I'm having a brain too. You weren't ready, were you? No, I, 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 I'm, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. The Celebrity yeah. Wheel of Fortune's going on right now on ABC in prime time. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you remember, of course, the controversy around uh, Paul Rubens, right? I won't go into details. Yeah, he well, got into a little bit of trouble, I right? About, I want about it. This is funny. All right. He was on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune the other night. And, of course, he's best known as Pee Wee Herman. And he was in Cheech and Chong, next movie. Well, on Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, guess what the puzzle was that he solved? At the start of the show, they do those instants where you buzz in quick and answer the puzzle. It was, I'm waiting with bated breath. Tell me. You can't touch this. Yeah. 90s pop song. <laughs> who did that How appropriate who? mc hammer oh yeah mc oh, hammer actually i like but that you song. get it i'm not going to go into detail it. but i thought that was pretty ironic but i i really am enjoying uh celebrity wheel of fortune and uh what else just a quick uh we don't you don't have to pull up the music but i did have a correction oh wait wait wait, wait. i had oh. but, but al doesn't have me up on the board very long. That's great. Um, oh, you had your music playing in the back. I had to have it low. Yeah, in our last show, we did it at Studio East about 1950s, um, big and low-budget sci-fi. I made a mistake. I talked about Michael Rennie being in two episodes of The Invaders. He was actually in three. He was in Summit Meeting Parts 1 and 2 and The Innocent. And the two-parter threw me off. I was thinking of the two stories. Anyway, a minor correction, but I don't like to put out any false information. Mm. No, of course so not. So that's all I've got. All right, then we're gonna wrap it up. And well, what about you guys? You got any one more things or no, corrections? No, or? Today. I, I've got nothing today. I got nothing. Today. Next week we'll be back to wrap up Black History Month with a tribute to Black cinema and television. It's gonna be awesome, right here. All right. Until next time, if I can get this to play. Okay. <laughs> you did fine. All right. All right. See you later. Bye. Apologize. Everyone watching on Facebook, I want to apologize about the internet outages. It wasn't our fault, but it happens. The wind blew, and this hasn't happened in at least a year, maybe nine months. We did a show about our favorite war movies, and so we had to do the show in three different videos or three different segments. So thanks for hanging with us, those that stuck along with us, and I apologize to Mr. Woody Wise and all the cliffhangers that tuned in. Very embarrassing, but um, we'll have them back on, and we'll do it as one continuous live show and live video. Yeah. And uh, and also, 
I think we're going to be back next week talking about black cinema, as I just teased, and um, Richard Pryor, the black exploitation flicks, like Blackula. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Richard Roundtree. There's so many great artists in the black community that really made a big impact in the world of cinema. And we'll, we'll wrap up Black History Month with that topic. And as we talked about today, we focused on Warner Brothers. This was Al and Tom's idea, and I think it's a dandy. We're going to start doing a show about the origin and history of a major movie studio. We're talking Paramount Pictures, 20th Century Fox, Warner Brothers, we can revisit. It's going to be great. I thought it was a great idea of theirs. And then down the road, we're going to do a show about famous film animals. Think uh, Flipper on TV, Right Turn Clyde, the Orangutan. We're going to talk about famous animals. Everyone loves animals, so that's all I had to say about that. Just teasing a few topics we have coming up, and there's some others we'll keep under wraps for now. And uh, locally, I want to give a shout-out to our uh, really cool BK. Let's see. I love this new show. I want to plug this new show. It's on, if you're in Atlanta, they're in Cartersville. And it's called BK on the Air. It's a pop culture show. And uh, they're live Saturdays from 10 a.m. until noon. And I just fell in love with this show. It's two dudes talking pop culture. It's more on the nerdy side, Al. Because, Al, you're not as much a nerd as I am in terms of science fiction and Star Trek, Star Wars. But these guys are like in my generation, and they sort of speak my language. And I highly recommend, and where are they? They're on uh, 1450 AM, 100.3 FM. What are those call letters, Al? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea. WBHF, I believe. And uh, they're in Cartersville, Georgia, on AM and FM. And, and you can find them on all the podcast outlets as well. And, uh, again, that's BK on the air. I'm giving a little Great tour show. here. Say what? Giving a little tour. I'm running the cameras around. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you can see everything. We're about to call Comcast on a three-way call. <laughs> There's time and waving. We... There we go. It's like... Uh, and we're going to let them have it, man. This is so inappropriate. Not, I mean, not inappropriate, but... If we hadn't done a show, it wouldn't have gone out. That's right. I, that's just my opinion. That's right. But but I, you know, most of the time it works fine. But today it just didn't. But we'll I'll put the show together. It'll be all right. Yeah, and send me a copy too, so I can send it to Fistful of Radio next week. And uh, so I put you on the spot, but I guess we're cool for next Sunday. I, I can say. do. I'll do all the work. Black right. Cinema. It was your idea, and it's know, a great we'll, idea. We'll 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 talk. We'll we'll have. Well, a, it's the last day of February. We'll have a roundtable meeting. Same, all right. All right same, we'll be here. Same. We'll be here. Don't you worry. Next Sunday, three thirty. We'll we'll see. Say bye. Later.